So let's go over the range function. So our do now today says, what does the range function do? See comment in sandbox one. So if we go to sandbox one, we get this program, which has a link at the top, which you can copy and paste and work with. So the range function returns a sequence of numbers. So we can see when I ran this program and I click run, I get back a whole bunch of numbers at the bottom. So let's break this down to make this make a little bit more sense and take a look at a more simple program. So we have for i in range 10 in sandbox number two, this one value. So when we have for i in range 10, this one value, we can see what we get as an output. And when you run this, we get 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So even though I put the number 10, it only went up to 9, but it also used 0. So if we count, that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 tries. So there's a total of 10 numbers, even though there's only 9 of the numbers, because there's 1 through 9 plus 1, which is the 0th try. So on time number 0, inside of this repeat, it ran all the things that were indented. So it did circle 15, pen up, forward 30, pen down. And it did that the 0th time, then the first time. So each of those is a iteration of doing the stuff below the loop. If I were to not have something indented, we would have an error. We need those four spaces that indent. And you'll notice that that one value, that value is our end value. So if we take a look at the first sandbox, we can see that there's three possible numbers, a start number, which is optional, a step, which is optional, and the stop value, which is what we put in, which says what position to stop, but it is not included. So you'll notice that 10, it never got up to 10. 10 was not included. It only got up to the number right before it. So if I change that to five, that would repeat zero, one, two, three, four. It does five circles because zero is the first try. It doesn't get up to the number five. So that is the first value, the first parameter, which is 10. On the next sandbox, we have sandbox two values. So this two values we'll see on this sandbox, which has two numbers inside the Farine range. Farine range two comma five. So five is the number of the end value. So you'll notice that it's going to get up to the number one before five. And the first is a start value. So a start value is a number that says where to start. The default start value is zero. So if I were to get rid of this and I were to just have five, it would run zero, one, two, three, four, and it was five circles because it ran five times. If I change the start value to one comma five, it'll start instead of at zero at one, two, three, four, five. But this time, because I increased the start value, but the stop value is the same, it only ran four times. So if I increase that to two, you'll see it starts at two, three, four, and then it stops because it's the number right before the end value. So it only ran three times. So we can say where we'd like it to start at, and then we can kind of control how many times it repeats four in order for it to work. Now the four, as we just mentioned, four is just getting ready to repeat something. When we say four, it's getting ready for the range, which is a list of numbers. And that list of numbers is the beginning value to the ending value. So the first is the beginning value of two to the ending value of 60, but not including that. So the range we can use to you know, decide how many times we should repeat. So I'm gonna set that back down to two. And we'll notice that you know, if I set the ending value to 50, it will repeat two, four, six. Uh, what did I do wrong here? Ah, because I forgot to increment it. Yeah, it's running, starting at 2 up to 50. My brain wasn't working yet, even though it's off the screen. So what I want to show you is that if you add a third value, let's say 2, that third value is the increment, is an increase. So no longer will it do 2, 3, 4, 5, but 2, 4, 6, 8. So I could, let's say I wanted to increment that by 10 every time. That's a step value of 2, 12, 22, 32, 42. So I can increase the number all the way up to whatever the end value is. Now notice we increased starting at two, that was the first run. It increased by 10, 12, 22, 32, 42. 
but it couldn't run 52 because 50 is the end value. So it stopped and it ran five times with a step interval starting at two, ending at 50, but the count increased by 10 every time. So I have a second program that goes over. So we're going to start at two, go up to 10, but go up by three every time. So two is the first one, then five, then eight. And it ran three times the commands that are in, indented inside of the repeat. Again, indent is a tab key. So we are going to get ready to repeat using four. I is a placeholder. That placeholder is of whatever time number we are on. And I can really be anything. I could say for dog in range. As long as I am using the same command, dog is now storing the number 258. I could say for happy potato. And it's going to work exactly the same way. I is just a letter that's storing the number. So I can really put anything in there. But I stands for increment. And increment just means to increase. So that's why we tend to use the letter I kind of just as default. But you can get ready to repeat, store a number, and then inside of the range from 2 to 10 with a particular step change. So we have the start value, the stop value, and the step value. The default step is one, which is why when you don't put it, you can get rid of it. It will just go up by one every time. If you decide to re-add it in, it'll go up by whatever number that you ask it to go up by, but it doesn't get to the end value if it hits it. It has to go one before it because it's no increase. It's not included. It's not included. Um, so essentially what for I and range is saying is for each number in this list, do something. That something being the stuff that's indented. And the list of numbers is made by the range. And you can see that if we want to list the range out, we can say that numbers is in a range of five, which inc includes those numbers. And if I want to print that out, which is I'm going to get into in a different lesson, this is not that important. We'll just notice that it prints out the numbers in the list, but we'll get into that in a different class. All right. So that is the range function and the three parameter values we can use in order to start, stop, or increase the step value. I'll see you guys in the next video. Hope this was helpful. Peace.